Hello, welcome to Lori's DIY Life. Okay, so mostly this video is me trying out my camera and seeing how this works. So what I'm going to do is I thought we could do a little crocheting and these are just wash rags that I'm making. They actually work really well. It's just a little square. And I don't know what you know about, um, any of you would know about crocheting. Probably some of you are fantastic at it, and maybe some of you have never done it. And, and I don't know, I am a non-technical crocheter. So, I do stitches. I don't know the names of them. I don't know what kind. I know some stitches. I don't know a lot of stitches. I just know stitches and I do it. I was taught by a young girl when I was an even younger girl so if that tells you anything this is another one I was working on and I ran out of the yarn and I just got this yarn a Dollar Tree and so you're supposed to use the cotton and this is Dollar Tree just cotton so $1.25 and so we're just gonna uh, oh, there we go. Let's see. I like it when it pulls from the middle because that tends to be a better um, pull. This usually will get tangled up and stuff, but it didn't on my other one. So I wrap it around my fingers like this, and then I take... Now some people will tie a knot. I don't tie a knot. I do wrap around, wrap around, wrap around a few times, and then I just start doing my chain, and that'll pull into basically a knot. So you chain however far you want to go, and the other thing I know is I'm kind of a tight crocheter. Um... This here was me really working to be loose in my crocheting. So I'm going to take this back out and we can start over again. So I wrap it around my fingers in a way that it's going to be really easy for me to keep getting more. It's going to run through nice and clear. Nice and easy. See how easy it comes right through my fingers. Nice and easy. So that's what I do. Then I just wrap it around my knee, my just however many I feel. And then you just take your needle and I take it to the back and the hook is in the front. And then when I come through I kind of grab here the loop that's already there and let my hook grab the thread and bring it through okay now you've done one stitch hold on to this okay I'm gonna bring it back around to the back let the hook grab that and bring it back through the loop and just keep doing that take the needle to the back go around the back to the hook bring it through the loop and up through okay wrap it from the back to the front it's caught in the hook bring it through the loop okay you got your loop from go around the back let the hook catch it bring it through the loop wrap it around bring it through so it's always going to be in the back so you go to the back to the front bring it through and I do, I hold on to my loop. I didn't realize I did that until 
just now when I slowed it down. But let me show you how fast. I guess I don't always. But you can get to going really fast. It doesn't take long. And if you're just learning to crochet, go to the Dollar Tree. Get some thread for dollar twenty-five, and just make a big long chain. And you really want to get to the point where you need your stitches all look about the same. Because when you start out, you're going to have some that are going to be really loose, some that are going to be tight. You know, get a feel. Relax your hands. Try to keep your hands relaxed. That's why mine tend to be a little bit tighter. And I'm being really loose. I can't believe I'm purposely though doing that. But I tend to get tight. So like... I'll show you, like, I usually like this. And I get tight, and I don't keep my hands relaxed. I don't usually do it that tight. Because <laughs> I usually can get it right through. But, but it gets tight, and there's a big difference. But you want to try to get your chain to be, um nice and even your stitches to be about the right um, tightness you know where's like here you'll see I got some that are really loose and then the ones that I did tight these are more my normal but I do try to loosen and I guess the way to do that is keep your hands relaxed just, you don't need to hold the needle tight. You don't need to hold the thread tight. Keep it relaxed. Find your comfort zone. And just practice doing your chain stitch until you get to that point. And when you do, the rest is easy. Once you figure out how to get that around that hook... That's big. I don't like these wash racks to be too big. I use them in the kitchen. A kitchen rag. And I don't like my kitchen rags really thick. I prefer them, you know, kind of small in my hands for cleaning. So I'm going to call that about right there. And it's always going to be different. It. When you get a pattern, it'll give you a gauge, and that's how many stitches should be in like an inch. Um, and supposedly, if you use the right needle with the right thread and all of that, your gauges come out. I never have my gauges come out. Like I said, I'm not a technical crocheter, and I never was taught how to do that or anything. And so, I just do it. I, I follow the pattern, and when I get to the point where it's the size I want, that's when I turn. You know, I sometimes, or I end up with something huge or something small compared to what it's supposed to be. That's me, but I can make a wash rag. So, um, now we want to turn... And for the first time, we're not going to do any stitches to turn because we have stitches. I'm just going to, I've got this, I'm going to skip one, and I'm going to come in here. Now you can just go in under one, or you could go in under two. And I'm going to tell you for this first one, this first row is a pain, and it's easier to do just one. I just feel like it's more secure if you do too. So I come through and then come through. Okay, now the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to loop one. I'm going to go through the two, come through. See, I messed up that last one. I didn't loop it. Two, come through two, come through two. Okay, 
loop one. I'm gonna find my two, and now I'm gonna, I don't know if we can see, come through two, come through two, come through two, and that's, that's all I did. So loop, go through two in here, go through, go through two, go through two, loop, get through my two, then go through two, and go through two. Loop, go through two in the chain, go through them, go through two, go through two. Loop one, go through two, go through two, go through two. And the reason I can say loop goes through two, goes through two, is because I'm looping, I'm going through two threads in here. So if you're only going through one, then when you come back, you're only going to go through one. But because I'm going through the two, I'm going to come back through the two. Now I got three on here. I'm going to go through two, which makes it two now, because every time you... Bring that thread around and bring it through. It's going to leave a, a loop. So, loop one. Go through my two from the chain. And go through those. Now I'm left with three. I'm going to bring one through two. Now I've got two. I'm going to bring one and go through the two. Now I've got one. This is just the stitch that I use. To do the wash rags, it's a very common stitch. It's used for a lot of stuff. Mostly this is how your stitches work, except for your numbers on how many loops and all of that. You know, sometimes, like the, I think it's the single, you just go through your two, bring it up, and sometimes you go straight through, and sometimes you'll get another stitch. But for the wash rag, This is the one that I use. I loop it, go through my two, 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 two. Okay. So I'm going to finish this real quick. And this row always takes the longest because you got to get through those strings in the chain. Once you get through the strings in the chain, it's easy sailing from there. So, just remember that. The hardest part for me is keeping it straight and knowing how to turn. And this one actually is pretty straight. So I did it right. Sometimes I remember the right way. Sometimes I don't and I end up with a disaster area and it's like zigzag. Um, I did learn a way that works every time, but that's more for um, like afghans and blankets and stuff. You're not going to use that pattern for a dishcloth. So I'm just going to show you how I'm doing it because I've had different people tell me different things and different patterns will say different things and so I've kind of just worked out what works for me and it may not work for you and I'm telling you if you're a technical crocheter and you see me do this you're going to be like no 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 don't do that that's not right so you know, I may not be the person that you want to learn from, but if all you're ever going to make is um, dishcloths, basically, 
then you're all right because what you know how important is a dishcloth but if you learn this these basic stitches anyways you got it made there's nothing else really to it so i'm at my last one and this is where i made that weird nut and so i'm gonna go through my two and Go through my two. And I gotta go back through them now. Why that TV got loud all of a sudden. As in the other room. Okay. So now we gotta turn. And so, I think what it is, is they tell you to chain stitch two and that's your first stitch. And so then the point is, I guess you're supposed to skip one. But then sometimes they don't necessarily say to skip one and then you'll look and you'll be like, that's not right because it ain't going right. Da, da, da. So what I found when I'm doing these, I just chain me one. Do my loop and I go in this one. And that's it. I'm not skipping that one. It's right there. And that's what I did here. And I think it looks okay. And then you just go. Um, so now you've done your chain and now you've got crochet. Now you've got the little holes to go in. See, they all got a little hole. And each time you're going to go through two because there's two on the top. So you're just going to do basically the same stitch. You're going to loop around your hook. You're going to go through two, come through two, go through two, go through two. And that's it. It's, you're going to keep doing that same stitch now. But it's going to be easier because you're not going to have to find the two. Your hole is right there made. That hole is right there made for you. So, I mean, at this point, it's just doing it. Right? It's just doing it. I'm just going to take you one more time to the end to show you again how I turned so that if you want to do it, you can do it. So loop, go through the hole, but that's two strands of yarn. So go through two, go through two, go through two, go through two. Make a loop, go through the hole, and there you go. Make a loop, go through the hole, and there you go. Make your loop, go through the hole. There you go. Make a loop and go through the hole. And we're all the way through, see? Look how quick, look how quick. We're almost at the end. So, make a loop. There's two strands and the hole. That's what you're gonna do. You're going through two. Going through two going through two. Make your loop. Go through two. Go through two. Go through two. Make your loop. Going through two strands. Go through two. Go through two. Making a loop. Go through two. Go through two. Make a loop. Go through two. Go through two, make a loop, go through two, go through two. Now this is going to be my first turn on this side, and this is, this is where it's really weird, right? <laughs> it's very weird. I'm going to do a stitch in here, even though you're not sure. You'll be looking like, is that a stitch? That is a stitch. There's the hole. There it is. 
it's there. So I'm going to make my loop. Go through my two. Bring it up. Go through two. Go through two. See? That, that first one, you can see my first one is always kind of odd. It's always kind of odd looking. But... And like I said, it's it's a uh, got a feather from my feather um, dangle or whatever my dangle my feather tassel that's what it's called. I'm gonna crochet one, right? Turn it, make my loop, and I'm gonna go through this one. I'm gonna go through the first one. So there we go. We're through. Now the rest is easy. Because if you look at this end, see here, you're going to go through that. You're going to go through right there. And that'll bring it up. Let me see if I need to go through all the way to it for you. Let's see how long has this video been. Okay, not too bad. We can do this really quick, and I'll get to the other end and show you. You just got to figure out if, if that's the stitch or the top of the stitch. If it's the top of the stitch, you go in it. If it's a stitch, then you need to find the top of the stitch. It works itself out eventually. It's just in the beginning where you're trying to figure stuff out. Because if you look on here... It's pretty discernible. That's the one, right? That's the one. But to me, if you chain in two and skip in one, and then you get to the end and you're like, okay, what do I do? Do I go in the chain? You know, and it'll say on the pattern, count as your first stitch, you know, and you're like, okay, <laughs> I don't know. I just want it to be simple and easy, and like I said, if I had learned maybe from somebody older, maybe I would have understood. I always just figure it out, and it always... Seems to work out, but I did have to figure it out, you know. And I'll tell you what, I made some crazy stuff. <laughs> I made some crazy stuff. I made some really pretty stuff. I made um I worked with this girl and she was having a baby a, a girl and I wanted to make her blanket and a beanie and little booties that all matched so when she was taking the little girl out she could wrap her in a blanket and have the little boonie um beanie on her head and the little booties and they would all match and I wanted it to look lacy because you know, as a little girl. So now I can see. Now I'm looking. This stitch is going into this one. So that's going to be my top stitch. Right here. So basically, I'm kind of going down into it. And coming through. And sometimes you might have to give it a little bit of extra string. To get it to the top but there it is so and I'm just gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna loop and go right in that hole what you don't want to do is go through the side because now you're adding a stitch and if you add a stitch, it'll make it longer on this end. 
And even if you count, if you had to stitch, your count could be, your count could be right, but you could be skipping a stitch at one end and adding on the other end. And you could end up with something that goes like that. I think I've done that too. Anyways, I wanted to make, make that thing look really lacy for her. And so I had to take a pattern, try to figure it out, and then try to just make changes to it to make it kind of lacy, frilly looking, which meant I had to get it triple, like around the edges, the brim of the little beanie, and around the edge of the little booties. And so that's when I learned that when you want to add ripples, you add stitches and it will make it get ripply. I had no idea. <laughs> and I just somehow said, well, you know what, let me try adding a stitch in, you know, every stitch or something like that. And before I knew it, I had that ripply, lacy look and I think it was, it turned out really cute. She loved it. She loved it, and as a matter of fact, another lady that I worked with was pregnant at the same time, but she was having a boy. And for her, I made a quilt, and it was the, I thought it was the cutest thing. Um, and I appliqued a picture on the quilt, and I'm telling you, the quilt took a lot longer than the crochet did. But I think she was mad that she didn't get the frilly, lacy crocheted stuff that the other lady got. And I thought, well, that's the last time. You know, I was just, I couldn't believe somebody was upset at me for giving them something that I worked hard on. You know, makes it kind of tough. But... I was very upset at the time. Not upset. I was hurt that she didn't think hers was good enough. And I thought, she has no idea. Hers took at least twice as long as the crochet one. But then I thought, you know, you can't let people stop you from being a good person. And they say, um... No good deeds goes unpunished. I don't believe that. I just think those are the ones we remember. And so we have to keep doing the right thing and doing the nice thing and doing, you know, being giving and, you know, like that because those people that are like that, that's their problem. You know, I know in my heart that her gift was as valuable as the other one. That was her problem. And I couldn't let that affect the person that I was. So, when I realized that, and then get back to myself, you know, but. Yeah, anyways, it, it did. If you add stitches, it'll make it ripple. And I, I, the point is that I've, I've had to learn a lot of stuff on my own. So, I don't know why I had to go into that story. <laughs> It's crazy. Okay. <clears throat> um, so if you like my video, hit the like and subscribe button. As a matter of fact, if you're seeing this video, then that means I got my camera working. And hopefully, hopefully that'll be a good thing because I got more space with the camera. I got a bigger view than I do with the phone. And my phone is still over on the side. So if something happens, I can know it. The only thing is I don't think I can pause this. But I think I'm going to have to go into video editing anyways. So, but we'll find out. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Prayer sent. It works. Um, anyways, thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join me again. Bye-bye now.